In this video, we're going to review the basics of actually tracking satellites. Uh, we're assumed that your site is set up. You can have a look at uh, a previous uh, video called the basic setup. And we're going to connect to our mount. We have two different ways to connect, either with continuous tracking or without continuous tracking. So we're going to leave this unchecked. And that means we're going to do a style of tracking called leapfrog. So we're going to connect to the mount. You can see we're connected because we got position coordinates here. Going to download a, download a TLE file. And we're going to go over here. And here's our list of uh, current and upcoming satellite passes. So let's see if we can pick up this uh, rocket booster here. This is the satellite path. The yellow is where it has to, where it's going to travel. The brown is where it has traveled. The blue is indicating the satellite position. There's our mount position. <clears throat> We're going to do a leapfrog, leapfrog style of tracking. What that is is the mount is going to move ahead of the satellite stop, wait, let the satellite um, drift through the field of view, and then it's going to um, jump ahead again and repeat the process. So we can change these values here. So this, it's a good idea to have these fairly large when you're beginning, uh, especially if you're not sure your computer time is accurate. So we're going to uh, leap ahead six seconds. We're going to let the satellite drift through the field of view, then we're going to wait another three seconds, and then we're going to leap ahead again. So we're going to hit Start Satellite Tracking. This is our estimated time that we're going to inter intercept the satellite. You can see the mount is moving over here. This is our separation between the mount and the satellite. You can see that number is ticking down. When it goes green, satellite's in the field of view. And then we jumped ahead again. So let's see what this looks like. So there we just saw the satellite go ahead. See the mount just moved. Sitting still, there's a star. And there goes the satellite, whizzing through the field. Jump ahead again. I'm sitting still, there's a star. I'm going to see our satellite any second. There it goes again. So that's leapfrog style of tracking. So I'm going to stop that. You can see there we were we were just in the midst of a meridian flip because we just. Uh, the next interception, the satellite was going to cross the meridian line here. To turn on continuous tracking, I have to disconnect the mount. Click on continuous, connect back to the mount. I'm going to load a, another TLE file that has more satellites in it. Let's download it and calculate it. And see what we've got here. Okay, so let's try tracking this guy here. Some of these satellites just aren't reflective or bright enough to show up on my video camera, so we'll We'll see if we got it or not. And you can see the that's ticking down to green. That means it should be in the field of view now. And there's the actual satellite. Um, that uh, streak that just went by down here, that was actually a star. So now our satellite is a nice tight round dot and the stars are going to be streaks as we're moving across the sky. 
if the uh, satellite isn't visible or isn't quite centered the way you want it, we can click this little pop-up, which has our adjustment controls. And I can slow it down. You can see here I click left, but it's moving right in my frame. So I can do a flip timing access. And now it'll move in the right direction. And this is going to vary depending on your camera and uh, which way the satellite's moving across the sky. I can move up and down by using these controls. In that case, I didn't have to flip. It was my controls were pointing in the right way. So doing this up and down is adjusting it perpendicular to the direction of travel. That's in terms of arc minutes. You can see the stars are streaking by this way, so we know which way our satellite's moving. So this is actually adjusting the timing. So if your timing of your computer isn't quite right, then you can click these arrows, and you can see we're, we're adjusting the flight path. If you want to do a quick reset, you just hit that zero, and everything goes back to zero here. There's our separation, so it's uh, it's tracking it pretty good. Just gonna hit stop. And you can see it was starting to dim out, and that's because it was it's very close to my lower limit of my walls in my observatory. Uh, my loss of signal is counting down, so in a minute, it's going to be totally black on me. So let's see if we can get the Starlink. Um, not all the Starlinks are visible because some have anti-reflective material on them and they don't reflect the sunlight too well. So the mount is coming up. There's our separation. That number is going down and we're green, which means we should be in the field of view. And there she is. So we got some adjusting to do. We got it centered. I'm going the wrong way. So you can see it's, it's sort of traveling up and down in my field of view. So I might want to swap my axes. So now when I hit the the down arrow, it moves down. And when I hit the left arrow, it's going to adjust it left. So normally I would try to get this nice and centered and then I might go to a smaller area of the chip. And what that'll do is that'll improve my frame rate when I'm capturing less. It's still not quite centered, so give it another tweak there. So that's continuous tracking. And again, those streaks going by are actually stars. And the satellite's nice and still in the middle here. And as soon as I stop my mount, you can see the satellite just takes off. Gone. Uh, you can also use a joystick. If you have a joystick attached to your computer, instead of clicking these buttons, you can use the joystick. And again, um, swapping access and uh, flipping the direction of the arrows will work with the joystick as well. And I'm just going to hit zero to zero these out again. And let's get another one here. There's a high one, and we can probably watch this one uh, this gray line here shows that the satellite will become eclipsed, so it's in the Earth's shadow there. And so we should be able to see it dim out as it gets there. Um, so let's start tracking. And 
again, you can see this, this number come down, the separation as it gets closer. And there it is, nicely centered. So we're gonna we're gonna lose signal here in about two minutes, and we'll see it uh, dim out on our video. While we're waiting for that, I'll just mention a few other things. This red circle here. That uh, shows where on Earth the satellite is currently visible. That red circle is the um, horizon, not necessarily the viewing limits you've set up. Again, that uh, red plus sign is our location, where the satellite's been, where it's going. And this gray means it's going to be in the Earth's shadow through this section of the orbit. Um, this is the list of our available satellites everything highlight green is above our viewing limit if it's uh, this uh, light red color or actually pink that means they're upcoming this shows the LOS is the when we're going to lose signal this is when we're going to acquire signal this is our maximum elevation Oops, sorry this is the maximum elevation of the orbit and this is the current elevation. So we're about a minute away now to LOS. So have a look here. We're still tracking nicely. So it's not um, it's not a definite cutoff. You know, the minute we hit LOS, it's not going to instantly disappear. It's going to go through in the same way. We don't have we don't go exactly from sunrise to sunlight we have sort of a, a twilight zone we're gonna we're gonna see the same thing oh we missed it it's already dimmed out actually what's it probably my observatory wall blocked it out and Let's uh, see if we can pick up this guy. So again, we'll see this number tick down as we get closer. And with that, once that is low enough, it turns green. We should see it here, if it's bright enough. So we, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to see it. Again, it's probably not a very reflective satellite. So that, that does happen. Let's try another one here. Cosmos are usually fairly bright. So let's... Uh, Start tracking this cosmos. Got to do a meridian flip here to get over to it. And there it is nice and centered.
And as soon as I stop tracking, you'll just see it fly out of the frame. There it goes. So that's a brief uh, overview of tracking, both uh, LeapFrog and continuous tracking, and how to use this tool to um, center the satellite in your field of view.